I'm Giacomo Slovaki from Florence. And before uh, starting, I wish to thank the organizer for the upgrade that I received to give a talk here. And uh, this, uh, in fact, gave me the possibility to, to uh, summarize the, the work that we are performing in the last couple of years in Florence on repulsive thermicasses. So the the, 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 the first, before starting, I really want to, to, to mention all the people that contributed in this work. So this is the region uh, group in Florence. And in particular, I want to highlight Francesco Scarza, that now is a postdoc there. And for the, uh, this work, we had also the privilege to have a collaboration with uh, Portland Cateve, with which uh, was very important the discussion about the second part of uh, this uh, group. And uh, of course, Matteo Giacanti, that was one of the leading person in this project. So, uh, I start, maybe I'll just go in this direction. Okay, so, the main, the main motivation, the initial motivation for our work, uh, I mean, you can, you can get from this sentence that, uh, in fact, I just extract from the paper of uh, uh, MIT. So, can a gas of spin up and spin down particles, fermions in particular, can become thermagnetic just due to repulsion? Well, uh, this is, uh, let me uh, give you the possibility to introduce uh, the so-called Stoner model. I will not enter in any detail more than this. And uh, that was, uh, was given by Stoner in the 30s to explain uh, ferromagnetic behavior of particular metal like uh, iron or cobalt. And anyway, in this model exists a critical value of repulsion from which the system phase separate in case uh, of a atomic system or just in the case of electron become fully ferromagnetic without the presence of any magnetic field. Okay, in the Stoner uh, model, that is mid field, uh, you get a critical value of a uh, repulsion of 5 or 2, then there were walls uh, with using Monte Carlo that give us a uh, more accurate uh, value of 0 0.9. Anyway, the, the idea here is that the competition with, between two energy, kinetic and interaction, or thermal pressure versus strong range repulsion, define the physics. Well, of course, uh, uh, as you as you can see from the paper of MIT, of course, in that case, uh, the idea was that ultra-cold Fermi gases are supposed to be the nice framework and the nice uh, system where to study this, because you can, in fact, control the concentration of up and down fermions, and, of course, you can also control interaction via flashback resonances. However, uh, you know much better than me that the kind of potential, interaction potential that we have in our system uh, is automatically connected to the presence of a bound state. Okay, so this means that it's impossible to have pure repulsion in this system without a bound state. Well, and in fact, the picture that most of you are familiar with is the one that was in fact proposed in this uh, paper by Steve Arkastan and Kupenko, in which, I mean, if I just put the energy per particle versus the interaction parameter, then the energy of the system can be described by two energy branches, the lower branch, that is, a, in fact, corresponding to Perry mechanism, and is the so-called BCDC as crossover at equal zero. And then you have a repulsive branch that, anyway, corresponds to a repulsive system that, anyway, is unstable, and we have two or three body recombination process. I mean, is the theory. And okay, the information that is very important that this typically happens on very short time scale of the order of few term times. Well. Uh, but you can see the things from another point of view, is that uh, we have a system now in which you have two competing instabilities. In principle, you can have a ferromagnetic instability. If you are repulsion enough, you should see phase separation. However, you have also the other pairing, the other instability that is given to the pairing, that deplete, that deplete this uh, upper branch. So I would say this is most, uh, I mean, something that uh, is giving a richness to the system and is not and my, my, my message for you is that it's not a limitation, but in fact is giving us the possibility to study eventually some exotic situation. Well, suppose that now I do not have any pairing, so is a pure the stoner model of sphere potential, for example. Well, then you would expect, and this was highlighted in the paper of using the group, that uh, you can have a growth of instability uh, that should, in fact, run quite fast, also this compatible with uh, some uh, Fermi times, and leads to the formation of eventually domains, initially uh, of size of the order of few interparticle spacing. But then, I mean, waiting time, these domains should evolve and eventually create a microscopic domain that, in principle, you would expect to see in your uh, imaging of when you image your patterns. However, if you have only pairing, of course, the situation is 
some that you know um, very well. Of course, at equal zero, for example, you will have a fully curved state. <coughs> well, okay, this is not a simulation, it's just a time model that we did in our, uh, in our lab, actually our PhD student. It's a classical simulation just to give uh, the flavor to what should happen if I have one, two, or a gold gradient. So suppose that I have only the past three particles, then I pass time in, and I increase the interaction between the repulsive interaction. And then, of course, what we trivially expect is that the system will fall to the mains. If you have only pairing here, then, of course, the system will evolve and then increase after the repulsion. So the possibility to actually the possi we use the possibility to, 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 to populate the bound state. And then, of course, you start to see what is the with some and then if you have both the, the situation, both the mechanism, of course, you can expect a situation that is a, a sort of combination of two. Okay, you can have a situation in which you have some domain, but also some margins. And this, I will tell you at the end, is in fact what we think we see in our experiment. Well, which was the situation? Uh, of course, the only, I mean, the work of MIT were the pioneering work, and in fact, were the ones that are, were our reference, I mean, when we started the experiment. So this is, I, I extrapolate and I did some modification uh, from Sander et al. And here is just populate, I mean, it's just showing the survey, so surviving fraction of atoms in the upper branch and the molecular fraction, so uh, after a fast quench to strong repulsion, okay, using magnetic field quench. Well, what was happening is that in a very short time scale, in fact, the population that of the upper branch was, was decreasing while molecular formation was, in fact, increasing. And here I want to also mention a paper that comes from Eugene Group uh, that was in fact more or less in the same period, in which they calculate uh, what happened to a system in which a sudden quench to strong repulsion was carried out. And in particular, they were calculating the growth rate of uh, the stoners of ferromagnetic mode and the pairing versus the interaction. And you were seeing that in this region of parameters, you were always observing that pairing in fact was winning against uh, <coughs> well, uh, of course, uh, I want to now to highlight, of course, uh, you see that uh, this is the, one of the, the, the message of my of, of this contribution, is that there are two kind of dynamics, what happens at the beginning and what happens at long time. Well, we decided to do the experiment, and in fact, we carried out two kind of experiment. The first one was uh, to study the evolution of an artificially ferromagnetic state that we prepared in our lab. And then we also study the existence and demonstrate the existence of repulsive fermicolon. And again, as Martin was showing you this morning, you see that the nice peak, uh, while I increase the interaction, become broader because, of course, uh, you lose uh, for strong interaction the concept of quasi particle. But I will not talk about that. So, if you want the, the results of, of the seminar, if I can, I can highlight in one slide. In fact, we have seen and we have demonstrated that the system can, in fact, evolve in a nice, let's call it a even though this word must be just combined, uh, dynamics due to the repulsive and attractive branch. So we can see, as, as, uh, we produce a system in which, at the end, we think that both repulsive, repulsion and attraction are present in, at the same time. Well, uh, so the part number one, at the beginning we decided to do an experiment that was obvious uh, to be tried, uh, in the sense that uh, two bodies or three bodies in combination, so the presence of molecules strongly depends on the density overlap between up and down particles. Well, I, so if Sonner would be here, probably say, okay, why don't you try to do an experiment which you reduce the density overlap? And again, this I want to mention, because Martin was mentioned this morning, is not only due to Azibabic and Zoran, that people started to work in a homogeneous system, of course, if you were you know, listening, Thierry Jomarki was always saying that we have to get rid of the trap to get some nice physics there. Well, our system is, a, in fact, from, is a lithium six atoms, and we were going to use all the three lowest demon states. Okay, so <coughs> the first experiment that I want to mention is uh, the evolution of this state, that in fact is an artificially created ferromagnetic state, in which we could segregate up and down fermions through a thin optical barrier. And again, there was a very nice idea in Matthias Trier group, in which, in fact, the system was evolving in this ground state. Of course, we know that this ground state is impossible to reach I mean, in our system, in our Fermi gases. So we decided to start from this state and to see how it evolves. 
Well, the, the, the interesting point is that we can produce systems that are very cool, and the fact that we have a thin barrier allows us to create separation between the two spin components only of few interparticle spacing, and of course, uh, having a relative momentum much smaller than the Fermi momentum. Okay? So this will be the summary, of course, of the, the Martin Thiele uh, experiment at MIT. And in fact, there are many similarities. Of course, uh, this uh, uh, scheme with this protocol has uh, obvious advantages. That, of course, uh, we suppress the density overlap because at the beginning, the two clouds are completely disconnected. This means that the pairing effect can be completely neglected at the beginning of the dynamics. And then, of course, we can prepare adiabatically the system. And this also is very important because we can reach, I mean, still the system is out of equilibrium, but we prepare in a way that is at equilibrium. In the sense that each cloud is not heated up by strange uh, preparation. And the two clouds can then approach gently when I remove the barrier. Well, the separate, they just to give you the idea how we do, we create one to make sure at three other Gauss. Then we adiabatically separate the two clouds at 0 0.5 Gauss where they have opposite magnetic moment by means of um, a gradient. And then we can rise up the barrier, and then the system are completely disconnected, change the scattering length via flash path resonance, and then in case we are removing the barrier and we start to see how the system evolves. Well, the measurement that I want to discuss with you is uh, about uh, uh, is the spin dipole mode dynamics. Uh, uh, because we decided to do this measurement because uh, uh, we were collaborating with Alessio Riccati and Alessandro uh, Stringari, and they got in this paper, uh, uh, I mean, they were describing how a measurement of the spin dipole mode could give us uh, some indication about the spin susceptibility. So here I plot versus the interaction parameter the spin susceptibility and the spin dipole frequency. And you see that you expect, of course, in the, the, the theory paper, a divergence around 1, KFA1, that is more or less uh, close to the 0, 9 uh, that Monte Carlo in fact was giving. Yeah. Ah, so mode is uh, the out of phase center of mass motion between up and down. And at the same time, the spin double mode should show a softening, of course, uh, corresponding to the change in the spin susceptibility. The other thing that was important for us is that if I was going to study the same physics but in the lower branch, when the two quantities uh, would be completely di di different because the spin susceptibility should decrease, and in fact, in the limit of BC, should be zero, meaning that the spin dipole mode should increase. Okay, so the two behaviors are completely uh, different. Well, the experiment is done like this. We prepare these two reservoirs and we switch off super fast, as much fast as we can, our optical barrier. And then we follow the evolution of the center of mass. Of course, this is very similar to what uh, Martin was showing in this model. Well, these are uh, three examples of uh, uh, oscillation, I mean, of the, the measurement of speed apple. So here I plot the difference in center of mass versus time for different interactions. Small interaction, critical interaction, and very large interaction. Well, then I summarize in a single graph. So this is the spin dipole frequency that we can get from here versus uh, normalized by the trap frequency versus KFA. And for the moment, just look at the, the blue point. So these are the data. Uh, so you see a decrease, a softening of the mode. Around one, then we start to have a, a, a jump uh, to a value of frequency for, that corresponds to two clouds that uh, are oscillating in half of the trap, exactly like Martin was showing in the movie. So the two clouds are bunching one against the other. So the green lines are reference got that we get from the theory of Sandro and Alessio. This is for the 100% overlap, this 25% overlap. Okay? So our points are more or less in the middle. The purple point corresponds to the same thing, but at different temperature. So at larger temperature, we see that we need more repulsion to enter in the same regime of bunching, if you want. Well, okay, that we were excited by this, but we then try to do the same, to study the same dynamics, but preparing the system in a lower branch. Okay, so there is a way to do, trust me, we prepare in the BCS, and then we go to the target field uh, in the lower branch, and we were observing the following behavior, so the blue are related to the low upper branch of dynamics, while the red one corresponds to the spin dipole mode <coughs> in a, of a system prepared in the lower branch, in the, in the lower branch. And as you can see, I mean, the spin dipole frequency just increases. 
and reach also three times the drug frequency that when we saw that we I was very surprised because it's probably my first time that I see such frequency in, in the system. Anyway, uh, the red lines are uh, we could I mean unless you could uh, could draw down uh, using uh, the data for the lower branch spin susceptibility by uh, Tajima and Hash. So meaning that this is consistent to a lower branch dynamics, that means that the previous data that I was showing you before are fully consistent to a, a dynamics of the system that happens in the, in the repulsive branch. Well, now come to the second part, and again, if I have to use a stoner, again, I would say you could tell us why, why don't you are, you cannot be fast, and try to be also selective. And I think that, okay, fast is important, actually it's fundamental, but mostly I would say that it was very important to be quite selective. Well, okay, this is, is my interpretation. Let uh, me is completely naive, but I mean, there are many systems that are very complicated. There are many phases, can be many mechanisms that are maybe competing in stability or heterogeneous phases. Well, how do you study this system? Well, that, there is a technique that is well used in condensed matter, that is to pump the system using light or the frequency, wait some time, and then probe the system. Okay? So this is pump probe spectroscopy. And in fact, it's very interesting because uh, it's becoming now a, a nice technique to study complicated system in condensed matter. Okay? Because this gives us the possibility to excite both collective or single particle modes. And then to see how the system, once that is uh, <coughs> brought out of equilibrium, can decay in a ground state. Okay? In case. Well, okay, so the idea is really to push the system out of equilibrium and I can use the word quench, quench the interaction, creating a repulsive thermogastic. And this is exactly the scheme that Eugene was proposing in this paper. Of course, our quench is not this time. Then we study the evolution, we try with a high time resolution, and then we start to see if we can prove competition between the two mechanisms. So a mechanism that is expected to create phase separation and the mechanism that, of course, wants to create population in the lower branch for the parent. And then, in fact, we would like to answer this question that, in some way, we had the question that I mean, we, were, we were posing at the beginning. So, is pairing in the lower branch always faster than the upper branch and correlation? And in case exists, can they survive this, or they are really vanishing? I mean, the lifetime is super short, that probably we are not going to use them in any way. Well, to do this, and this is why I will say that we, it's important to be selective, uh, because uh, we use a technique that was in fact proposed in MIT and in a group of us in Tavra de Eugene in uh, at Gila, that is spin injection spectroscopy. So we take advantage of the fact that lithium-6 is uh, very nice because uh, there are not only flashback resonances, but there are also interconnected flashback resonances between different internal states. So if we start from the one to state, then we can flip all the two in three, and then we create a one three picture that is strongly interactive. Then, of course, we can monitor the population, and we can change the concentration, but this is not the case in this case because I just use 50 50 percent mixture. This means that the one two mixture is weakly interacting, the one three mixture will be strongly interacting. <coughs> well, to, to do spectroscopy is important and uh, to have some reference uh, that we want to use. And of course, we decide. I mean, the first, uh, the, the obvious reference is uh, the two to three transition without the presence of one. Okay. So this is our reference. Let's call bright rabbit transition reference. But then, of course, if I tune and if I add the, the two, I mean, if I add the one particle, then the situation becomes more complicated because I have signal that is giving me the one three lower branch populations for molecules, and at the same time, I have an atomic peak that corresponds to the atoms that are living in the upper branch with a positive detuning with respect to the zero, to the reference. Well, then the, the pump probe experiment I mean, is obvious now because uh, what I need is to pump the mixture in uh, the repulsive branch, wait some time, and then probe the system. So I pump the two to the three, I clean almost, um, no, auto, I clean all the two that remain, I wait some time, and then I throw, I throw back, I mean, flipping the three to the two again. Of course, uh, there is a caveat here, is that uh, the time must be quite fast, because again, the population in the lower branch 
are increased in, in, in a few fairly times. And this time, for us, there are compromise between what we can do and how much we want to be selective, of course. In, in frequency. Okay. So, we have a triple zero, we start, we pump up the one to the three, so we know where is the, the, the upper branch because uh, uh, we did the uh, <coughs> measurement on the polar one, so we know exactly where the energy of the state is with respect to the zero. <coughs> then we wait some time, and then we flip back. Okay, so let's see uh, what we see. Here I, I just uh, report the, the number of two states after the drop path normalized total, two plus three, uh, versus frequency for a value of a repulsion of around 2.3 kfa. And then as you can see, I start, and this is the time that I wait, is the evolution time of 150 microseconds. So we have the two signals, so we have the atomic signal and the molecular signal. Of course, if I wait more time, I, what you expect is that molecules form more and more, and of course the atomic peak decreases. And of course, within more and more time, this is here. Well, now let's concentrate on the atomic peak, okay? So the positive that you need peak. Well, of course, its amplitude <coughs> is giving me the number of atoms that are in the upper branch. That is the negative of the number of molecules that I'm holding. Of course, it's uh, the interaction sheet, so this delta plus, let's call it like this, is telling me how, I mean, which is the interaction energy or the mean interaction of particle 3 in the upper branch due to the presence of 1. Okay? Then, this you can see, you can convince yourself that uh, it's proportional to the contact that in fact is probably the particle 1 and 3 are close enough, uh, they interact at short range in the upper branch. So, we have this two quantity now, and let's see what happens while I wait time. Well, as I said before, for sure the amplitude should decrease. But also what we observe is that also the shift change, okay? So the shift is moving close to zero, and the amplitude is decreasing. So let's see if we can extract some quantitative behavior from this uh, uh, trend. Well, here I plot a signal that is in fact proportional to the amplitude and normalized to the initial one versus time for different value of, of, of repulsion. And this is the shift normalized to the initial one versus time. And now I focus on what happened in a very short time scale, okay? Typically of, the, the, of less than 200 microseconds. So that is the, the shortest dynamics that we can follow. And just before you ask me, for this measurement we use a pulse of around 50 microseconds. Okay, it's not a pi pulse, it's a pi over 3 pulse, but it's the shortest pulse that we have to do now, and even the, the our <coughs> system. So, if I see the behavior here, then I can extract two quantities that uh, I would call uh, gamma delta, that is uh, how fast the shift moves to zero, and uh, gamma pairing, that is corresponding to how much I'm losing particle in the upper branch, that is corresponding to how fast I produce molecule in the lower branch. And here I got the two quantities, to normalize uh, this is gamma, so it's 1 over tau f, so it's the Fermi time, versus the interaction. So, please look this part, because increasing the repulsion, in a certain moment, a certain moment you see that the system is faster in reducing the energy shift than, than populating the lower branch. This is more or less the message that the work is here. And here I compare with the, uh, the work again of Eugene uh, group, in which, okay, I changed the color just because in this way you can really see better. So this is the molecular formation rate, and this is the ferromagnetic uh, correlation rate. And you can see, I mean, if you, if you look this number, for example, for this, is around 0 0.3 in this scale, and it's very, I mean, it's the same scale, so in fact we see compatible rate, okay? So our rate is compatible, or in some agreement with the one that Eugene was uh, suggesting. What is not, okay, so it's not the uh, same, of course, is the molecular formation rate. The this is much higher, and in our case it's much lower. <coughs> Okay, there are possible explanations. Uh, anyway, the message is that uh, uh, there is an interaction window for which short range anticorrelation grow faster than decay in the lower branch. Well, which kind of decay we have? Well, since we have everything in fact, we can see how the molecule form, and they form via three body recombination rate. 
So this is we can extract from our data, uh, the gamma three. And uh, if you see, there is a line here that is uh, the theory of uh, Dima Petrov just put on our data. So it seems that, I mean, of course, the theory it will, will not is not working for super, for KFA larger than one. But for this value of uh, of repulsion, it seems that the decay that is depopulating our upper branch is three body recombination. And if I'm not wrong, in the Eugene paper, they were expecting two body recombination rate to be relevant. Okay. It's mainly body. Main, yeah. And, There's power principle. Yeah, and and then there is a, probably the other thing that we think can be different is that the preparation in our in our case is not a sudden. Well, so I don't know if the preparation of our in our case would, would affect probably in this possible. It would be nice if someone could do the theory for our for our experiment. But this is the only one that uh, I mean actually it, we can compare with. So let's see. Okay, this is the short dynamics. Here. Yeah. What happens if, if I go to C at long time scale? Because of course uh, this trend, we I just uh, was showing you what happened here. But then of course we see that both the, the amplitude and the shift have a they have a dynamic <coughs> at long time scale. And this is a really long time scale because our Fermi time is of the order of 30 microseconds. So these are 100 times, are quite 100 times the Fermi time. So it's a very long evolution. Well, okay, I need some some moment to explain you this because it's not. Obvious. So we fix the evolution time at 20 milliseconds. So the probe pulse is after 20 milliseconds of the, the, the pump one. And here in blue, I just report the same quantity. So the normalized shift and the normalized density. So both the quantities show decay versus interaction. <coughs> okay, so this is case. Well, the two messages that for case larger than one, the interaction shift dropped to less than 10% of the initial value. However, the atomic population never decreased below 15%. So this means that, in some way, there is, there is always <coughs> a possibility that we have atoms in the upper branch while we have molecules in the lower branch. So, okay, which kind of dynamics can be? Because we can enter in many business here. We can think of that we heated up everything, and then we created a hot incurrent mixture between atoms and molecules. Well, there is an additional quantity that I can use to describe the system. That is the width, okay, of the probe pulse. Here I plotted the width of the probe pulse versus the one of uh, an ideal Fermi gas. So this is the initial width <coughs> versus time. And you can see here that after, after I mean, one time fast, we have a drop in the width that reached the one of an ideal gas. Uh, so you can see better here, this is the orange is this point. And we have two lines here. So there are points, the blue points that are experimental data that I took during the evolution, and the crosses one are the one that we did for an ideal Fermi gas. So the message is the following. The width decrease and reach the one that is just fully limited, so it's the one of an ideal Fermi gas. So this trend is the opposite with respect to what uh, maybe argue if in case that there, are, there is a system that is hot and molecules and atoms are colliding uh, like crazy, uh, because this would create a, a broadening, a, a even larger broad, broad line with respect to the initial value. It's like if our system behaves like composition of an ideal gas of up separated by down in the presence of molecules. So, to summarize, uh, is pairing instability always dominating? So this was, uh, in fact, our question at the beginning. Uh, I would say, if we trust our data, we say no, because it's possible that at short times, it's possible to create anti-correlation faster than molecules. At longer times, in fact, it's open. It's a quite, I mean, we don't know, in fact, what is happening because for sure we have a situation in which these atoms are there in the repulsive branch in the presence <coughs> of molecules. We wanted to call like emulsion phase. Okay, it's some, for sure it's a correlated state. Well, the, the important message that was uh, for me essential to give to everybody is that uh, the data that I presented you are completely compatible with the one of the previous experiment by Wolfgang uh, at MIT. And if you remember, I was highlighting the two when showing the dynamics uh, in, this, uh, in the standard paper. And if you go to see in the detail, they were observing, of course, a fast drop in the atoms, but then atoms were always there at longer time. So the, low, the upper branch was, in that case, was still populated. The good thing of the experiment now is that we could probe with high resolution, because we know exactly where the repulsive branch <coughs> is after that we perform polar measurement. 
Okay, so we were selecting properly the upper branch, and we could follow all this decay in the lower branch. What we'd like to do is to go into the, in a box trap. Okay, also we'd like to do this. Just because in this way we could observe eventually the presence of domains, this is still debated. Of course, we don't have only, so the problem of resolution is not really our problem now, it's the problem that the system is 3D, and so when you integrate to the imaging, we lose the possibility to see <coughs> physically the, the formation of these domains that are expected to be of the order of a couple of microns. Okay, so a small, but in some way, not. Maybe in 2D could be possible. And then with this, I would like to thank you. Okay, that is a few interparticle spacing. 
then you can ask me when I go to a infinite, what uh, this, this is your question, what happens? Yeah, I mean. So, so, okay. uh, I'm just curious about where any uh, incompatibility. Uh, okay, so what, what, the, okay. So, what we did for analyzing our data anyway was considering the fact that the system is not homogeneous. And so we did a, a radial average considering the density of the variation. So the KFA that I was giving, I don't know if you were considering were not like K but K flip, that means that every quantity was averaged, okay, to the distribution, of course. It would be nice to do the experiment in the case of homogeneous. Uh, very long times, we, your experiment saw the, still uh, the presence of fermions, which are strongly repulsive, but there was no indication for any coarsening of the domains. The domains really remain small. Uh, could you explain that by that there were so many molecules repelling the atoms that they couldn't? Yeah, for sure. They together and domains, the small domains could emerge. Yeah, so for sure, the, the role of molecules formation that increase very fast could be could explain this. So we we don't have so if we rule out the possibility that uh, we are heating the system, so there are temperature effect, and this is not the case because since that the temperature increased but then became like a, a light constant. We, the speculation is that we have this uh, sea of molecules that are forming between, of course, to form, uh, and, and this probably block the system in a sort of glassy phase. But this, again, uh, is something that would be nice to have a direct measurement of the density in the trap. Because, uh, this is just spectroscopy, and uh, for sure is a very good probe, but uh, I mean, we would like to see something much more but in 3D, I think that is not possible. Okay, at least for us. <laughs>